Hello everybody and happy spring break. We wanted you to tune in today because we thought we would make something a little different from what we made last time. For those of you who watched, we did biscuits and shortbread last time. Today we are making <coughs> excuse me, homemade pizza. And I don't know of too many people who dislike pizza. But today's a really special occasion. And today's occasion, we are making this homemade pizza in honor of our niece. And her name is Madison Williams. And as you can see, it's Madison's seventh birthday today. Hi, Madison. Happy birthday today. Hi, Madison. <laughs> We're so excited for you. Madison is in first grade and she's one of the smartest young ladies we know. And we wish we could celebrate in a big party with her, but we will do that at another time. Today we're gonna to make homemade pizza. And then a little later this evening, we're gonna actually deliver it to her in a very safe way, of course. So it's Madison's seventh birthday and Madison's favorite pizza is a extra cheesy pizza. So today we're going to make a nice big cheese pizza and we'll make sure it's all set. And if you like pizza, then this is something that you can do as well. Pizza is a very fun item to make. It's fun in the kitchen as long as you're very safe and you have an adult supervising with you. Because with pizza, not only do you get to roll out the dough and make all of the ingredients, but then once it's ready, you can make it however you want it. So if you like just cheese, like Madison, then you can make a cheese pizza. In this case, we're gonna be using mozzarella pizza. It looks like this. It's all grated up and ready to go. Some people like to put other toppings on their pizza. Pepperoni, for example, it is a very popular choice. Some people like sausage or ground beef. If folks wanna go healthier, then they can either add the cheese or not. They can put all kinds of fresh vegetables on their pizza. I'm a big vegetable pizza person. I like sweet peppers and sweet onions on my pizza. I also like green peppers, but people can put a variety of different toppings, mushrooms. Some people even like to put pineapple on their pizza. Mm. I don't, pineapple for me is not a good one. Is there anybody out there who likes pineapple pizza? Me. If you're like Miss Melissa and you like pineapple pizza too, you can shoot her a quick message as she's recording this for us. So before we begin, I also wanted to tell everyone it's mid-April already. It's beautiful outside. And one of the things that we do in the Williams family to enjoy this time of year because we can't be in the schools is to take walks outside or to play with our many dogs outside. I have two big dogs. And both of them, named Timber and Fletcher, love to play outside and chase a ball. So even though you're not in school, you are on spring break and you should be able to enjoy activities outside. Some people like to play games. Some people like to just take walks or jump rope. But being outside with your family in a very safe environment with adult supervision always is something to think about during the next few days of spring break if the weather like today cooperates. So I think we're ready to begin. If everybody's ready to begin making pizza on this special day, then we'll go ahead and get started. And if you look at the ingredients that we have measured out on the counter, there's some very basic items here. So we'll start, we have sauce, a, a standard pizza sauce. Now, Melissa is an expert at making homemade sauce. I will tell you today, Mr. Williams cheated just a little bit. This is not her fancy homemade sauce. This is a regular pizza sauce, but Melissa makes wonderful homemade sauce. We also have some um, Italian seasonings that will add to the sauce, and you can make it spicy, as spicy as you like, or not, it's up to you. Then we have, as I mentioned earlier, the grated mozzarella cheese. And then over here, we have the ingredients that we'll be starting with. We have just standard flour. We have a little bit of salt. And then we also have some dry yeast and warm water that we'll be using to mix together. I'll show you that. 
And then over here to my left, we have light olive oil. And we'll be using the olive oil a couple of times today. Once to mix into the crust ingredients. And then a little later, we'll actually put a, a small thin layer of olive oil on the actual pizza once it rolls out. And over here, I'm gonna save this for you in a bit. We'll do a big reveal shortly, but Melissa, Miss Melissa's cheating, I can see. <laughs> She's showing you what's in there, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is until we're absolutely ready to do the reveal. So as you can see, again, I've got my gloves on to be safe in handling food. Always wanna wash your hands. I did that before we started, and then I'm putting on gloves just so that I can make sure the food is safe for Miss Madison on her seventh birthday. But I recommend that if you have gloves, that you do the same. Okay, so what we have here, and Miss Melissa will be putting out the ingredients for everyone a little later, so you don't have to worry about writing them down. But what we have here are two cups of very basic flour. And into the two cups of flour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add half a teaspoon of salt, just regular table salt. So you can see, pour that in nicely. And I'll set that over here. And like last time, I use a special sized whisk. So I'll show you my three whisks again. We have the super sized large one. We have my favorite, the medium sized one. And this one doesn't stand up and it's colorful and it's a very small whisk. So to mix in the salt with the flour, I don't need that one. This one's too small. I'm just going to use my favorite medium-sized whisk to get it all mixed in nicely so that it's ready. So now that we have that mixed in, the next step is to get the dry yeast ready. Now yeast is very important in different types of baking and cooking, especially for things like pizza, because the yeast will help the pizza dough to rise. Now I like thicker crust. Miss Melissa likes thin crust. You'll have an opportunity, if you make this at home, to pick the kind of crust that you want. But no matter the kind, you want to have it be able to rise. So I have just over a teaspoon of dry yeast here, about a teaspoon and a quarter, and I'm gonna dump it into the warm water. If you can see, I'll set that over there. It floats on top of the water. It's real cool looking. It just sort of sits on the top of the water. And so now what I want to do is I want to mix it into the water just a little bit. And so this one, should I use this one? Miss Melissa, should I, should no. I use this one? No, don't think so. All right. I don't think we're going to use the big one at all today. So I'll put it back over here. I think this is the perfect size to mix in the yeast in the warm water. So if you can see what I'm doing, just very lightly, almost just stirring it in. And try to get it all off of the whisk. And just let it sit there. You can see there's some stuck on the whisk, but that's okay. I had more than enough in there for the one pizza to be able to rise. So we let that sit for a minute. Whisk over there. And then I'll tell you a little about, about what we're going to do. So when I mix in the yeast, that's about two thirds of a cup of water and a little over a teaspoon of dry yeast. I'll pour that in and I'll, be also, I'll also be adding in one tablespoon of light olive oil. Now, in your mom or your dad or your grandparents' cupboard, you'll probably be able to find some kind of oil, different kinds of oil. There's canola oil, there's vegetable oil, and there is avocado oil. That's Melissa's favorite. I don't like avocados much, unless we're making something with them called guacamole. And then there's a variety of different olive oils. So I'm gonna show you Miss Melissa's oil cabinet while we're oh, waiting geez. for that. It's over here, 
And Mr. Williams gets all kinds of confused when he looks in here because <laughs> there are sprays and bottles and jars. And Miss Melissa is very particular. And you'll notice that she has this nice fancy glass bottle with the small spout to pour just the right amount of olive oil. But over here is where we keep all of the large bottles that we can use to refill that glass jar when we need to. And it's loaded up here with different kinds of oil. So as I look at the yeast, it's about ready. It's got sort of a, a cloudy color. And we're going to pour that into, make a small little well right here with my whisk. And just pour that right into the middle. Make sure I get it all out as much as I can. And that's going to be very important to help make the crust rise when it cooks. Now before I mix that in, I'll need one tablespoon of this light olive oil. See it pour, pours nice, very controlled. So we have one full tablespoon and I'll just dump that right in. You can see oil doesn't mix well with water, so it sits on top. So now I have all of the ingredients to make a nice crust. And I'll very lightly stir this in together, for starters, with my whisk. Look at that, it gets all caught inside the whisk. Oh no, how to get it out. Tap it a few times. If you make a mess, it doesn't matter. I always make a mess. A little piece fell off over here. We'll set this in the sink. And now, Melissa, you can see that I have many spatulas. Yes, I do. So I have a great big scooped spatula. I have a curved, very stiff spatula. I don't like those two very much. Then I have a very small spatula and a regular one. So I'm going to go with this cute pink and white one. And we're going to use it to finish stirring in and mixing the flour and the salt with the yeast and the light olive oil. Make sure all of the moist ingredients are mixed in with the dry. And now comes the fun part. This is where if you have your gloves, you gotta get ready to get dirty. And that's the fun part sometimes in baking. So, what I'm going to be doing is mixing this with my hand. You can use both hands or one, depending on the size of your hands. I like to just use my right hand. I'm right hand dominant, so I'll hold, always hold the bowl or the container that you're using and mix the ingredients together. You can see there's still some dry in the bottom of the bowl, but no worry. As I continue to do this, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm not hitting it hard, but I'm pushing it down with my fist. This is called kneading. You knead the dough. How do you think you spell knead, Miss Melissa? K-N-E-A-D. Isn't that a weird spelling? N G. Yes, so I am kneading the Put dough. Me on the spot. Not like N-E-E-D, I need to eat some pizza tonight, but I'm kneading the dough. Now this takes a while. The recipe that I use, again, is from The Joy of Cooking. It's my favorite cookbook. And if you tuned in last time, I mentioned that my mother gave me my copy when I graduated from college and I had to start teaching. She thought at the age of 22, when I started teaching at my very first job in Dover High School as an English teacher, that I would have a lot of time to learn how to cook. I didn't. <laughs> and 
And I didn't really start using my cookbook until many, many years after I started teaching. Because teaching is very challenging. Teachers have to do a lot of work outside of their classroom to prepare their lessons, to grade papers, to make colorful, exciting, and even magical classrooms with beautiful bulletin boards. And I will tell you that those classrooms will be ready for you when you go back. They will be as beautiful and as magical as you remember them. But when I did all of that as a teacher, I didn't have a whole lot of time to spend on cooking or baking. You can see the ingredients are almost totally mixed together. I need to press a little harder to get the last pieces of the dough. And then sometimes when you knead, you just fold it over. So you can take it, get it nice and flat, and you just fold it over in half and press down. Fold it again and press down. Keep doing that. Now, as we go, it may get a little sticky. So the wet ingredients, as they mix in, will make the dough very sticky. So I may add just a pinch or so of flour so it's not quite as sticky, but it's coming together real nicely. You can hear the sticky sound on my glove, listen. I think I need a little bit of extra flour, Miss Melissa. So over here is my flour. Just a little bit on the scoop, maybe a little more than a pinch. I'll toss that in there. And watch what happens as I knead the dough. You see it. Press the dough into it. Now listen, do you hear sticky? Not nearly as sticky because the flour reduces the stickiness, kind of dries out the dough a little bit. So when I started teaching, I taught English and I had, oh, maybe 140 students in a high school. My high school was almost, well, it's about the size of Smyrna High School. And I taught ninth grade English, and I taught 12th grade English. And when I taught, I would come home in the evening, and I, after I graded my papers, I didn't have a whole lot of time to think about cooking. So I had very unhealthy eating habits. I remember one of my favorite meals, and I probably ate it three or four nights a week. And it's not healthy, and I would never recommend it. But I'm gonna tell you what I ate. I would get a big bag of Doritos, the nacho flavor side, and I'd get a can of Hormel chili. Your parents probably know what I'm talking about. And then I would get a big bag of shredded cheddar cheese. Parents, you know where I'm going? And so I'd get out a plate and I would dump about half the bag of chips. I would open up the can of Hormel chili, dump it on the chips and top it off with about six ounces of shredded cheddar cheese. And I'd put it in the microwave and heat it up. Instant unhealthy nachos. Gross. So that was a long time ago. And I don't do that anymore. Melissa loves to cook and I love to eat. So we make a good pair. So if you look at the bowl now, you'll see that my pizza dough, after all of this kneading, is pretty well mixed in and it's sitting there. What happens next? Well, this dough needs to sit with no one touching it for about an hour or so. And the yeast and the warmth will help it to rise so that when it bakes in the oven, it'll be nice and thick 
on the edges and the crust will have all of the flavors that you think of when you eat pizza. So I need to set this aside. And what we do is we cover it up. But before I cover it up, I want you to see some dough that I prepared about an hour ago. And it's the exa same exact recipe here as the one I just mixed there. Which of the two is bigger? Let's see, can you get a shot of both of these, Miss mm -hmm. Melissa? Yep. So this one is the one I just made. It's about a little bit bigger than my hand. Oh my goodness, look at the size of this one. I'd say it's almost double the size. So it's been sitting here undisturbed. It was covered up and I had made this quite damp and I just let it sit. So this is the one we're going to use to make our pizza today. And this one I'll set aside and make a pizza with that one another time. So let me wet my paper towel again, make it nice and moist, not soggy, just moist. Just a little bit of moisture and I'll set that over that bowl and push it aside. So we'll leave that for another time. So now what I have is my pizza dough all ready to be used for crust. I have my sauce and we like a little bit of just a touch of Italian seasoning. So I'll put a little bit in there for Madison and then we're going to sprinkle on top mozzarella cheese. Okay, so let's do this first. Let's just sprinkle in just a little bit. You tell me when to stop, Miss Melissa. Mm, keep going, because that's good. Good, right there? Yeah, you can put some more on top. Oh, when, when you're done. finished? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll set that aside. And I'll mention in a minute about cheese, so we'll talk about that too. So let me mix in. I'm going to use a fork this time, just a small fork, just to kind of mix in the seasoning with the sauce. It has a nice, it'll have a nice flavor to it. And the aroma, I can smell those Italian spices, they smell delicious. So what are Italian spices? Oh, you're funny. So we have, um, we have, I will read, I will read the McCormick's <laughs> container. And I know that oregano is in here and basil. Let's see what else is in here. Melissa, Miss Melissa loves basil. That's why she's teasing me. I'm not a big fan of basil by itself. But this has basil, rosemary, thyme, oregano, savory, and sage. All mixed in this handy dandy McCormick's perfect pinch Italian seasoning. There we go. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that for mm -hmm. us, Miss Melissa. Well, people want to know. Okay, very good. Now, we're down to three containers. The dough, the sauce, and the cheese. I'm going to move my oil back here so I don't forget because I want to be sure to put a little bit on the dough once it's all prepared and before we put the sauce on. And the reason we'll do that is a nice layer of oil, not a whole bunch, just a little bit, almost, I'm going to say waterproofs the dough and keeps that sauce from soaking in and making it so soggy that when you eat it, it flops around in your hand. We want the dough to be as crispy as possible, and this will help create a barrier so that the sauce doesn't sink into the dough. You'll see when we actually do it. So now I've got to figure out what am I going to cook the pizza on. I've got to figure out what to use. How about over here, sitting on the stove and getting a little warm, which is the way I want it, not too hot to touch, it's just a little warm, is my pizza stone. Yes, Mr. Williams has a pizza stone and it's round just like a pizza, but you don't have to use a pizza stone. And if you don't have a pizza stone, that's okay. You could use 
the same different cookie trays, the same cookie trays that I used last week to make biscuits. They were stone. <clears throat> you could use, again, just a metal cookie tray, a small, medium, or large. Anything that will hold the pizza. But I think I told you I love to eat and I love to make food. And so a long time ago, since pizza is one of my favorite foods, we decided to go ahead and get a pizza stone. And it makes it very easy to bake the pizza. And as the stone gets really hot in the oven, it will help to bake evenly from the bottom through the pizza so that the crust gets nice and crispy. It helps with the overall even cooking of the pizza. So okay. now we're ready for this big puffy pile of pizza dough. Now when I pick it up and use it, some of the inflated quality of the dough will decrease. It will go down. But the yeast has done its job and that's what we wanted it to do. And I'm going to drop it. It's fun to just drop it right there on the pizza stone. Now I will tell you, Mr. Williams cannot twirl and throw pizza. That is not something I have learned to do. There are people right now who are watching who can do that. And I would not recommend you try it without a big person like an adult, because you could end up throwing it on top of the cabinet, it could hit the ceiling, it could break something. And I am sometimes accident prone. So I'm not even gonna try to throw the pizza. I'm just going to spread the dough out on this nice, warm pizza stone. So that when Madison is ready to eat it, it will be cooked as perfectly as I can possibly make it. You can see the dough has a nice quality to it. It sort of pushes out. And you see I flip it over each time just to help spread the dough evenly. And I'll want a nice, sized crust on the outer edge so that it bakes and gets nice and brown. I like crust on the back end of my pizza and that will help to create a nice crust. So it's very thick on the edges so I'll sort of spin it around a little bit. I put a towel under here. Don't think I needed it but the stone is warm so I just wanted to be careful. Push it out, push it out to the edges. Pizza does not have to have a perfect shape to it. You can make it whatever shape you want. It's your pizza. Traditionally, many pizzas are round. Melissa's well, making faces. She doesn't <laughs> think that that looks very good. Oh, cockeyed. We'll get it straight. Some people make square pizzas. Just have to bear with me, Miss Melissa. Don't judge. You can never judge the food before it's done. It's looking better. All right, so what I want to do on the outer edge is I want to, I'm going to say, plump it up just a little bit. Kind of like the crust on a pie. This is a pizza pie, not a fruit pie, but on a fruit pie, a lot of times you'll have a thick crust on the end. It's a little thin here, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra so it doesn't perforate or break a hole in it when it's baking. But that will also make a nice bubble as it cooks. I like bubbles in my pizza too. You may also like that. And so, Over here will be the, the piece that I would like to eat because it's going to have a real thick crust right here. All right, so now I make a little bit of a plumped edge around the pizza so when I eventually put the toppings on, they won't run off the edge.
What do you think, Miss Melissa? It looks good. Does it look okay? Mm -hmm. You think we're ready to put a little bit of olive oil on it? Sure thing. Okay, now you have to be very careful with the olive oil. And so what I would usually do is just sprinkle a little bit on here. But I think what I'm going to do to make sure I don't overdo it is I'm going to pour it in a bottle. Sorry, I'm going to pour it from the bottle into the glass bowl first. So I don't want to get too much, just a little bit. That's probably about a tablespoon. And I have a cooking brush. This is not a painting brush for the house. Be careful never to use a painting brush. This is specifically for cooking. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab my brush in the olive oil. And then really what I'm going to do is paint the pizza. This is kind of fun. Dab it in there. And you just paint the pizza. I don't know if you can see the shine. Can mm -hmm. you see the shine? Yep. That shiny look is the oil sitting on top of the dough. It will not soak in. And as I mentioned, it'll make a nice barrier. So when I pour the sauce on the dough, it won't soak in and make the dough soggy. So I'm done with this. Done with this. We are down to the final two ingredients. I wonder which one I should put first. Do you think I should put the cheese down first? Mm. Or should I put the sauce down first? Which one should I put first? Sauce. Should I do sauce? Yes. We'll do sauce first. So again, this is where Pull out another utensil and I have a, a ladle, a small ladle, very small. I have many ladles also, but this is a small one. And so I'm going to use it, just give another little mix to the sauce to make sure all of those Italian spices like basil and thyme and sage and oregano are all fully mixed in. And then I'm just going to put it on the pizza. It's very simple. And so I'm going to put three ladles full and see how that looks. You can put as much or as little sauce on your pizza as you choose. Some people don't like sauce. Some people don't like sauce at all. And that's called white pizza. It's called white pizza. It's my favorite. I didn't even know that. I've been married to Miss Melissa for 26 years and I did not know that white pizza was her favorite. I know she likes pineapple on her pizza. Mm -hmm. I do not. So when Miss Melissa and I make a pizza at home or we order one, I always have to do half with my toppings and half with hers. She likes, oh, let's see, mushrooms? Mm -hmm. And you like black olives on your pizza. Oh, yes. I've never liked black olives on my pizza. You don't like black olives, period. Well, that's probably true. And so when we do a pizza together, black olives, mushrooms, pineapple end up on one side that I will never touch. And on my side, I'll have green or sweet peppers and onions. And every once in a while, I might put on some meat. But as I mentioned earlier, I really, really like veggie pizza. So, as you can see, I didn't even need all of the sauce because I think that looks good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Madison, does that look good to you? You think that looks okay? I think it does. <laughs> and now, you can see, even as it's sitting here with the heat on the pan, the crust is, is, bubble, is getting a little thicker on the outer edge, and that's going to get nice and round when it bakes in the oven. And so, now what we're going to do is we have what is called shredded mozzarella cheese. So your mom or your dad or your grandparents, your guardian can buy pre-shredded mozzarella cheese or they can buy it as it comes in the deli section of the grocery store, which is... Or the cheese section. Or the cheese section. <laughs> Uh, an eight ounce ball of mozzarella. I think we're going to need to have Miss Melissa make something at oh, some point because she has a lot of critical review to provide <laughs> while I'm making this pizza for you. So 
we have an eight ounce ball of mozzarella. And what I, what you can do is you can buy it like this and you can open it up from the sealed packaging. Don't do it. <laughs> you can waste it. And you can get a cheese grater like this and you can see the rough edges, be careful, that's sharp. You never wanna really rub your fingers on that because you could actually cut yourself. It's very sharp all the way around, different kinds of grating. So right here is a very fine grate. Here's a, a bigger grate. We could grate the cheese ourselves and put it in a bowl. But for today, we've got pre-grated cheese. And so all we're going to do now is take this mozzarella, that's the basic cheese on any pizza, it's that nice chewy cheese that stretches across the pizza and you decide how much you want and you just sprinkle it on just like this. Another reason that you want to think about wearing gloves is if you're making a pizza like this for many people you'll see that there's a lot of touching involved in the pizza. I have my hands in the cheese, so fortunately I have nice sterile gloves so that if other people are going to share this with me, because that's a pretty big pizza, it's probably too much for one person. I think you could handle it. Hmm. I do love pizza, I have to say. <laughs> and so I know Madison likes cheese, and so I that was just a, that was Miss Melissa's blender that I had set on the floor <laughs> when I took out the grater. And so I think we can put quite a bit of cheese on this and it will melt nice and evenly. I have a little bit left. I'll uh, just well throw it on there. I might as well just throw it right on there. We're gonna make it extra cheesy today, Madison, for your birthday. <laughs> and we'll sprinkle it here. all out of the bowl and now what we have ready for the oven is a fully decorated yummy looking delicious extra mozzarella cheese pizza mm. with tomato sauce and italian spices and our own handmade crust so that will bake in the oven which i have preheated back here for about 25 minutes and it's going to bake at 400 degrees so as i've mentioned before this is where you want to make sure an adult helps you you want to make sure that the adult is the one who puts the pizza in that very hot oven and make sure that you don't do anything to get in the way when your parent puts it in there now miss melissa wants me to add a few more of the spices on top so just a little sprinkle just here can you see that sprinkling in just a little there you go is that good mm -hmm. okay just a little bit to top it off probably no more than half a teaspoon added mm -hmm. in and the neat thing about this stone is it's very sturdy and it doesn't the pizza won't slip and slide and so i'm able to open up the oven with one hand and slide it right in so let's go do that now. See the oven is heated to 400 degrees. And I'm just going to slide it right in on the top shelf to make it easy to get to. And I put it so it's centered in the oven. And we'll go ahead and close it so it can safely cook. And I'm going to set the timer for 25 minutes and it'll begin counting down. So we thought what we would do is bake that for 25 minutes, now that you've seen all of the ingredients and you've seen how we made it, and we're gonna let that cook. When it's done, I'm going to take it out and Miss Melissa will take a beautiful photo of it so you can see what it looks like when it's done. And you're gonna post that photo, right, Miss Melissa? Absolutely. You'll post the photo and the recipe and the recipe so that you can see what you need to make it. And then you'll see what it looks like at the end. So to recap, it'll sit in there for 25 minutes 
at 400 degrees, and when it's done baking, then we will take it out, snap a photo, and post it with the ingredients so that you can see. So it didn't even take an hour, 20 minutes to pull that together. If you add another 15 minutes or so to get your ingredients together, it's about an hour to prepare your pizza and just under half an hour to bake it. And it's something that families can do together and they can make many pizzas. So I could make a second pizza and put different toppings on it. Or families can share the pizza and do what Miss Melissa and I do, which is to do half and half. My daughter Lauren is firmly in the pizza camp that Melissa is in. And so the two of them really enjoy the same kind. So I would probably make a second pizza for myself and make them share the first one. So I'd have one all to myself. So again, I wanted to thank you all for tuning in today and watching us do a homemade pizza. It's something you can do with your families. Don't forget to enjoy some time outside and get lots of exercise. We can't wait to see you again soon. And remember that your teachers care about you, your families care about you, and your friends care about you. So during this very challenging time, make sure that you stay in touch with one another and you have as much fun learning as you possibly can. And we will see you all as soon as it's very possible for us to get you back. So take care of yourselves. Happy spring break. And I'll see you soon. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone. Bye, Madison. Bye.